We've been rock climbing for three years now. Very on and off because we travel a lot, but we still have a lot of fun doing it. Now, even though we're not great at climbing, we still learned a lot of tips, tricks, and hacks over the years. So hopefully these will help you get better at climbing too. Let's start off with some climbing etiquette. When you're at a climbing gym, you don't want to be that guy who's doing the thing that annoys everybody else. One, don't be a spray lord. One of the things that we love about bouldering and climbing is that it's very much problem solving. We don't feel like we're working out and you're trying to figure out this puzzle of how do you get your body from point A to point B. So don't be the guy yelling out beta at random people that you don't even know. It's kind of like spoiling the end of a movie. No, no, right, the, no, no, right leg up to the, yeah, 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 the, no, no, try the left one. Yeah, yeah, if you get your right hand up there, oh, it's, it's, it's great, it's a great hold. Just, all right, now reach your left, reach your left hand way over. Back flag, you just back flag right there. You... Yeah. If you do see someone struggling or you want to offer some advice, just simply ask first, would you like some beta? Two, to spot or not to spot? When you climb outdoors, spotting is a very common practice and highly recommended. It just helps to make sure the climber who's on the wall doesn't get injured if they fall off. In the gym, it's very different though. They build in these giant foam pads so that when you fall, you're less likely to be injured. I know in the gym, I fall very differently than what I do outside. And if somebody's there suddenly spotting me and I didn't expect it, I could be injured or they could be injured or both of us could be injured. It could be bad. Now that doesn't mean you can't spot in a gym, but only spot if they ask you to spot. Three, brush those holds. Now generally you'll see people brush holds when they're working on a problem or you know when, when those holds just get greasy and gross. But one of the setters actually recommended to us, hey why not just brush it after you're done and get it ready for the next person. Makes sense right? It's kind of like when you go to the gym and you use the weights or a treadmill and you get all sweaty all over it. You wipe it down for the next person, you don't expect them to wipe it down. Number four, be aware and mindful of others. One of the most common mistakes we see with new climbers is they're excited to be in the gym and they get on a problem and just stay there trying it over and 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 over. Oh, they're finally done. Nope, again. Just be aware of who's around you and there might be multiple people who want to work on the same problem. This is especially true when it's really busy. Typically what you want to do is hop on the wall, try it once or twice if you fell off near the beginning or if you're further along and you fall off back away, and let other people try it. Also, if there's a problem that you want to work on and somebody looks like they're really close to sending it, let them finish before you kind of disrupt their flow. Number five, stand away from the walls and keep those bags and bottles in check. It's always good to be aware of where people are climbing, especially when you're rounding a corner Try not to round the corner tightly in case there's somebody right above you that might fall. Also, water bottles, chalk bags, know where those are and keep those away from the wall as well. We've had friends who've gotten really injured because they landed on a water bottle that they didn't know was right under them. Let's talk through some hacks. Funky shoes. Those climbing shoes can get really, really funky. Esther has a pair that's just... Now most of that funk is caused by moisture, so the way to prevent that is to keep it dry. Once you're done climbing, blow dry your shoes so they do dry out. You can also use gold bond or baby powder and put it in there after you climb to make sure that soaks up any of the moisture. When it does get unbearable, scrub down your shoes with a toothbrush and laundry detergent and make sure they fully dry before you put them back on. Number seven, shower in your shoes. It's hard to explain exactly how climbing shoes should fit, but the best we've heard is they should kind of be like ballet slippers, since we all wear ballet slippers all the time. Now a good way to think about it is that your toes should be slightly curled so that you can stand on them and get good traction on them, but they should never be under or crossing. They're not meant to be the most comfortable shoes. Now a lot of times brand new shoes will be stiff, so you need to break them in. Three great ways to do this. One, shower with them. I know that sounds crazy, but if you hop in a hot shower with those shoes on, it'll help shape those to your feet and soften the rubber. Two, 15 on, 15 off. Bring your climbing shoes to the office and put them on for 15 minutes, then take your heels out for 15 minutes off, then put them back on for 15 minutes on, and so on and so forth until they feel better. Three, hammer time. Bend your shoes and hammer the sole of your shoes to soften that rubber. It'll help break those in quicker. Number eight, chalk your arm. Now most people who boulder typically don't wear a chalk bag on their waist, but at the same time, some of those climbs are kind of long and you may need to re-chalk. One great hack is to put some extra chalk on your arm so that when you're up there, you can 
reach out really quick without having to reach behind you. Number nine, take care of your hands. Your hands are very important in climbing and they can very much get injured. Whether you're talking the skin getting ripped off or your joints, there's a lot that can go wrong. So it's important to take care of your hands. You'll see a lot of climbers with tape on their fingers. That helps kind of prevent some of the joint injuries, but also some of the skin. And we recommend talking to some of the locals at the gym to find out how to best do this. We also love using an ointment after we climb to help heal your hands and make sure they're in good climbing condition for the next day that you're back. Number 10, climbing jeans. I know when I first started going to the gym and saw people in jeans, I'm like, man, those guys are hardcore. But what's great about climbing is really you can climb in whatever clothes you're wearing. We particularly love these boulder denim jeans because they're made for climbers. You can wear them out in the city or wherever you are, and then when you go to the gym, you don't even have to change. Plus, chalk wipes right off of them, and they're super stretchy and comfortable. Now let's talk about five tips to help you improve your rock climbing. 11, try something different. After you've been climbing for a little bit, you will reach a point where you feel like you're just plateauing. I feel like I've been there for the last two years. It can get so frustrating when you feel like you're not getting better. In those cases, don't just keep trying to climb harder climbs, but try changing things up. If you're really good at the crimpy climbs, start working on the slopers, or vice versa. And if the climbs at your gym just start getting boring, you can play some climbing games or climbing exercises. Let me know if I should do a video on those. Number 12, know when to rest. Sometimes we get really excited and go to the gym day after day after day, spend hours there. And after five days of that, our bodies feel wrecked. Climbing does put a lot of strain on your body. So know when to rest so that you can get better in the long run and don't just focus on that short term. We were just in this situation climbing every day for a few hours and now our hands and fingers hurt a lot. So we're trying to take a break and give ourselves some time to heal. Number 13, top rope to help with stamina. We don't love top roping, we much prefer bouldering, we just find that it's more fun. But when you are reaching a point where you're kind of plateauing or you need to work on some other things, check out the top rope walls. It's a great way to work on stamina and you can put all those skills you've learned to the test. Number 14, try climbing comp. We still haven't done this, but if there is a local competition, you should enter one. Most competitions have varying levels, so you can enter where you feel most comfortable. And it's just really cool to experience trying all these brand new climbs with a bunch of other people. Number 15, make friends. I know that sounds so cheesy, but climbing is so much more fun when you have other people to climb with. Even when Esther and I just go by ourselves, we don't really motivate each other or push each other, but we found a small group of climbing friends and a climbing community here that makes it a lot more fun. Usually a great way to do this is just start chatting with people that you're working on the same problem with or who are around the same level. Also get to know some of the climbers that are better than you. It helps a lot to watch them and get tips from them when you start struggling. I hope those help you guys out. If you're ever in New York City, come check out Brooklyn Boulder's Queensbridge. That's where we climb. We would love to climb with you as well. Let me know in the comments below if you have any other tips tricks or hacks for other people to check out. And if you want to see more climbing videos, let me know down there as well. See you guys later.